Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! Six minutes after 9 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this time to be blinded by science. Jim George is here. He's going to answer your questions about technology and about home entertainment systems and everything associated with that. Jim is the owner of American Cable Services, and so be sure to pay attention to what they do as well because one day soon you're not going to have to buy a whole package of things you don't want because he offers things a la carte, and uh, it's still in the works, but one of these days we're all going to get that. Uh, Jim is here to answer your questions. Remember the number to get on the air and speak to Jim is 622-WOCA. That is the WOCA Climate Control Source Hotline, 622-9622. And let's say good morning to Jim. Good morning, Jim. Good morning. How you doing? Fine, thank you. So the news is 300 final, the final 300 blockbuster stores are closing. It, correct. So that affects who? Who, who actually was going there anymore? Was, no, was, there were a lot of people lot going of people there. You know, there? Some people had bought the packages where for a month you pay like X dollars and you get two videos and then you send them back. It was going through the mail. Right, right. Um, and then, of course, Redbox had a better idea. They say, why well, have an infrastructure that costs, let's say, a couple of hundred thousand dollars? Uh, let, let me just put a box out there that only costs 5000 and still do the same thing. Yeah, right, right. And then Netflix came along and said, well, why don't I do the same thing? But instead of having a... Uh, infrastructure or a facility of any type i'll just s stream it and as you see where the technology is going so the streaming started working so well right, right. that the big box stores just couldn't keep up and even red box although they're doubling the number of locations as we speak um it's difficult for a, a hard fastened facility you know, to keep up with the streaming. Sure, And that's sure. where it's going. It's going, sure. it's going wireless. And, and part of that might just simply be the cost of upkeeping a building. It, exactly. Remember when we talked, I guess it was several months ago, and I told you 3D was dead. You know, I went to a meeting in, in uh, Dallas, Texas, for the Independent Multifamily Cable TV Consortium, and they were all saying the same thing. That th people who went out and bought 3D sets, there's, right, right. there's literally little or no content for it, and there won't be. Really? There really? Be. I guess it's is, is it because you have to wear glasses. Is that the problem with that? Well, no, the new sets have actually created a, a, a panel or a screen that you don't need the glasses on, but uh, 4K is coming out. You know, it's four times the resolution wow. of high def. Unbelievable. And you've seen high def. Yeah. Can you imagine four times the rest? So it's so sharp that all the back contrast and forward brightness, I mean, you can see depth. Right. Okay, okay. So what I'm looking at right now, I'm looking at you. Right. With with God technology. Yeah. <laughs> it, it looks like that, right? I'm it does. I'm and, guessing it's like And better. Same. Because better, <laughs> yeah. Because maybe you, you know, if you want to turn the purples up a little bit and turn the blues down, I, got you, I mean, right, right. You change the the saturation or whatever it is, right? You know, they used to have like a, a contrast ratio four thousand to one, and then ten thousand to one contrast ratio, and then forty thousand to one, and. And you go to the Sears, like, you know, right across from you here, you probably see a TV that has like a million to one contrast ratio. Huh. Wow. So that's the, that's the pixelation that you can pick out in colors huh. that are better than you and I even see today. So is that 4K, is that surpassing the quickness of the film industry and the, and the uh, uh, television industry to film and record in their high definition stuff? Are they falling behind? No, they're not really. See, what happens is the film industry just records in cellulose, you know, the, the either 35 millimeter or 70 millimeter, and then the video people convert that to whatever they want to convert it to. Oh. But they will have to do it like in the IMAX format in the sense of 70 millimeter. Mm -hmm. In other words, m more uh, resolution on to the cellulose, you know? Oh, it's, wow. It's fantastic, though, what's going on. Wow. So I wonder why, and maybe it's just a money thing, I wonder why, um, well, I've got a couple of thoughts about this. I'm kind of scatterbrained right now. I, I wonder why uh, Blockbuster didn't go for streaming. I mean, why didn't they jump on board the bandwagon? Why are they well, just closing shop? That, that is the age-old um, business model that um, everybody asked a question. I'll give you, for instance, uh, Kodak. 
largest film company in the world. Right, right. They are the inventors of the digital camera. And can you imagine the uh, so conversation? They put themselves out of business. Can you imagine the <laughs> conversation in the board meeting? Hey, since we are the inventors of digital camera and everything, why don't we make some digital cameras? And why don't we, you know, go into the digital age? Ah, now celluloid is going to be around for years. Everybody has these cameras. They're going to need our film. They're bankrupt. Everything went digital. In oh words, my! Uh, well, no, I, I I read something about Kodak, and they yeah, you're right. They got out of the film business, but they're into the lens business now. They make lenses. They make lenses. Yeah, they're yeah. good at optics. The thing is, yeah. they are they are the patent holders for the digital <laughs> wow. camera. Wow! So well, I don't and they know. leased it. Look what happened. Everybody took off with it. So you know what I'm worried about? Like I'm worried, and I don't know if I should be worried. Let's hear your thoughts on this. If if um, streaming on the internet can can down a business and all the brick and mortar versions of that business, then couldn't the same thing happen to the Barnes and Nobles of the world because of Amazon? Oh, of course, exactly. And they're closing. They're, you don't see the big bo- uh, bookstores opening up. You know, even the uh, libraries now are streaming their books. Yeah, I mean, li- literally. I know. If I want to go to the library here and order a book. They'll ask me my email address and say, can I stream it to you? And, of course, I like I, I go to the library to get a real book. You like a real right. book. I don't, yeah. you know. Me too. <laughs> but I wonder if, if that's a dying. It's probably going to die slower than, than uh, DVDs. But I wonder if books will eventually die because the younger people, the younger kids will just be so used to it. It's, it's going to be just run of the mill for them. Well, whole cities, especially small cities, are, are opting to close their libraries. It's a liability. They have a building. They have air conditioning. They have employees. Right, they right. have books. They have a, f- a special fire license because of all the paper in the place. I mean, and why don't they just close down and take every one of their books? And if they're not already uh, IP'd, you know, be able to stream, they'll right. be, mm-hmm. they'll just scan them and send them to you. And well, that's hmm. that's what's unique about the Marion County Public Library system is that they always make sure to have different programs there. Yes. So I guess that offsets. That 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 type of needing to do that, right? And if you go to their book sales, a lot of times at the library, you'll see all their audio tapes are being sold, their video uh-huh. tapes are being sold. Why? Because they're putting everything on the internet. Right. Wow. They're, they're on servers. You want to watch a movie? You just you sign up for it, and they'll stream it to you. Now, now, have, are you playing a role in in that for people? This is probably going into a different direction than we normally do on this show. But do you ever have customers who say, "Hey, I know you you know high tech. I got these VHS tapes. I got these eight millimeter films. Can you?" help me put them on my computer do you ever play a role in that I, I don't but only because there's companies that do that for a living as a matter of fact one of the guys I used to work with for over five years out in Colorado a couple of years retired and moved to uh, um, IB Island or Ty, Tybee Island Georgia uh-huh, uh-huh. and uh, he opened up a, a little small company in his basement that converts anything to anything so if you have an eight millimeter and you wanted it converted to a CD or whatever he he has all that equipment and he cleans it up too so he has like impulse noise reducers so there's sparkles in it and things like that wow. these, these machines take all that out and so you put in this bad copy of a, of a videotape, and out comes a, a brand new thing on CD. Gosh, you know, that is or, oh, that's cool. Or he'll send it to you on the you know on the internet and say, oh, "Did you get it?" And yes, okay. In other words, you you now have it, and he he just did it for you, and then he'll send you your originals back. Wow, wow. Like, like the cloud, then he must. Send yeah, he it stores it in a server cloud. and sends it to you. That's uh-huh. the technology. That, that's where we're going at at the show. When they ask the private cable operators, what are the things that you would like to do that, that you're unable to do, they all mention cellular repeaters. And uh, nobody could get it done. And I said, I've been doing cellular repeaters for years. <laughs> what is that? Oh, what wow. does that mean? All right. So you, um, you're in this building, and because it's all concrete, your cell phone doesn't work. Right. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's got a metal roof. <laughs> right, right. So you have to go outside to answer your cell phone. All right. Well, a cellular repeater, they, we put an antenna on the roof. Uh, or the side of the building facing the cell tower. It works with every single cell tower, so it works with AT&T and Sprint and all of them. And then you bring it inside, and it's got a little amplifier, and you plug the amplifier in, and then it, ah. it boosts the signal, so it's a cellular booster. Now, they're really great for business. For homes, they're a little expensive. They're probably like $400. Oh, okay. But for business, it's maybe 1000 But 
it covers the entire building. So now anybody working in this building, whether it be a steel building with uh, like like a hangar or something where cell phone doesn't work, you have cell service. Really? Now, when we say building, would the mall be too big? No, the mall would be an ideal candidate. Really? The yeah. whole mall? The whole mall. Wow. But you'd have to put maybe three for the whole mall. Okay, okay. And this is good news for the salespeople because uh, usually salespeople are, are out and about more than in the office. So more than likely, they'll give their cell phone number. And then when they're in the office, they need to answer that cell phone. Exactly. And come through the cell phone. Mm -hmm. or, they could just, or they could forward the cell phone to their office number, but at least they know it's going to forward. Oh, that's oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you got to have that it's signal. Come, instead of getting a voicemail saying you've reached so-and-so, it's forwarding. Mm -hmm. Jim George is in the studio. He's answering questions about technology. And if you have a question, you are invited to call. Jim is the owner of American Cable Services, and his knowledge is unbelievable. We pick his brain every week about things, and I think we all often go off track of the main purpose of, of his visits here, which is to talk about cable. Uh, but the number here, if you'd like to speak to Jim, is 622-WOCA. That's the WOCA Climate Control Source Hotline, and we'll give you Jim's number and website later on. So I'm going to pick your brain about something else. Sure. There was a story on something that there's a lady here in Ocala that is one of the testers of the Google Glass. And there's apparently only a select few people who are testing these things. What do you know about this, these glasses, or this, whatever they call them? Well, I'm not positive what Google Glass is, but I can tell you what I think it is, and maybe I'm wrong. Corning has um, the TV of the future, Corning Glass, all right? And the TV of the future, uh, you want to watch TV, so you have um, a little tube that's maybe one inch in diameter and three foot long strapped to your back, let's say. Really? And you go to some place, and you open the top of the tube up, and you bring out this sheet, and you unroll this sheet, and you stick it to the wall or set it on the desk, it's your TV. Wow. That's, oh. that's how thin it is oh. and how flexible it is. And they actually have them right now with this whole countertop here, and this is quite long, maybe 10 foot long, is a TV or a monitor, for lack of a better term. Anything can come on. And so you can you know, get your email and hit things and keyboard. Oh, wow. So all those things you saw in science fiction movies are available today. Oh, wow. wow. So, but now the Google Glass is like a pair of eyeglasses, it looks like. And it looks like there's a little prism on the corner of it. And that's all I know. And I'm, right. I'm guessing that that little prism is... The TV. Somehow yeah. you see things through that. Yeah, what they've done is they've done experiments. So let's assume you have a 65-inch TV. How far back can you be watching it and still feel comfortable with the size of it? And then if you move closer to it, maybe a 55-inch TV. And then you move closer again, and 40-inch TV, and you move closer. And so what happens is the military has a heads-up display that's in the helmet. So a soldier in Afghanistan wears this helmet, and a little two-inch by two-inch display is right before his main dominant eye. Uh -huh, all right? uh -huh. The drone is flying overhead. It sees what's going on behind the mountain, behind the tree, whatever. It transmits that to the satellite. The satellite sends it to Tampa, Florida. McDill Air Force Base looks at all those different videos from all the different drones. Oh, wow. De determines what the soldier needs to see, sends it back to the satellite. It comes down to his helmet, and he can see what's over the hill, what's ahead of him. Every wow. Everything. And, and it looks like it's a 65-inch TV. Why? Because it's only one it's inch so away close. from his eye. So yeah. the whole, wow. so so the whole thing, and now his other eye is not covered. He can see, you know, the, the people and what's going around. Right. He's got a voice mic. He can talk to the satellite and say, "Could you turn it? Wow. To, could you tell me what's to the left? Because I have a crew over there." Right, right, right. And all that. To, so they just took the military um, already developed open a platform uh, of information and created a glass classes that do the same thing that is awesome wow even the drone technology is amazing to me i mean the, the way i understand it it's just remote controlled helicopters or sophisticated yeah. flying things whatever well uh, when when this technology is increased like that at leaps and bounds do you have to dig up your old cable and put new cable in to compensate for that or is it conducive no uh, well coax cable is really uh quite unique um it used to be you could put an amplifier on it and deliver you know 22 channels and then maybe 58 channels and then you know 100 channels and then and then now you can do 158 channels of analog television and then they digitized it oh. so now uh, even if you have old coax which was only and you had an amplifier that could only uh, produce 200 analog channels uh -huh. that's 2,000 digital channels 
with, oh. the, with the same old coax. So oh. coax has no frequency um, cutoff point. It's just how many amplifiers and how short the amplifiers are together and those oh, really? to amplify the signal. So no, the coax in the ground, but everybody is moving towards fiber because of what the capabilities of fiber. So uh, pretty soon you'll see the whole nation. By pretty soon, I don't know, maybe it's 20 or 30 years, but uh, it's definitely in our lifetime, the whole nation will be fibered. And then by the time they get it all fibered, wireless is gonna be so (laughs) attractive that that, that the fiber, you know, the only reason for fiber is security. I mean, you can't get into a fiber to, you know, to pick its brain, let's say, but if it's wireless, you can, you know, receive the signal, Uh, try to unhack it. So for homeowners and for TV and for video and and some form of communications, it'd be all wireless, but for military and that kind of stuff, it'll Mm -hmm. probably still remain point to point fiber or um, 128 bit encryption um, military codes. Oh my gosh. You can't break those, I mean. And now, even for our stuff, we have a 256-bit encryption. Really? So by the time you even turn your computer on that, tell it to analyze, it's changed already. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? That's yeah. Amazing. And that's all to protect it? That, that it's pro- to protect it. The, the programmers um, are leery of people like myself that are going to offer uh, <laughs> TV um, to a customer through the open internet. And we tell oh. them it's not open internet. It's You can't hack it. In other words, it's really point to point. When I give you a box, uh-huh. that box does only one thing. It looks at my server. If mm-hmm. there's 10,000 boxes out there, they all just do one thing to look at my server. And all the information flows from my server. They said, but still, we need to have it encrypted all the way to the TV. Oh. So what we do is we encrypt it so you can't hack into it. And that little box is really a dumb box. So it has no decoding in it. It's mm-hmm. only at the point when you sign up that we stream to you a, a, a code, a key. And then when your box locks in, it registers the MAC address and it measures, it registers the IP address. And then that's the key unlocks the stream. Hmm. This goes back and forth. Oh my gosh. That's it, done. How fascinating. So you can't, you can't steal the key, because as soon as, if you unplug the box or move the box, I know you moved it. A different, uh, the same MAC address is coming wow. from a different IP address. Oh. Wow, it's, it's amazing. Yesterday we had a, a doctor in here, and she was talking about surgery that she does using a robot. Uh, I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> Not down there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But okay, so you heard that. But but the, well, never mind the area of the body we were talking about. But just the the fact that you do yeah. these precision little things with right. with a robot that's fascinating. And remotely, you right. can you and, can take that robot to South Africa, a poor area, and a brain surgeon in New York can can um, operate on you. That's exactly right, and, and and I guess that's kind of where I'm I'm using that and bringing that into this conversation because it looks like I mean all around us there are different uses for technology that are changing more than just our entertainment choices right right i mean enter- entertainment is kind of what you primarily are at well, we're information home. you in- are i mean information delivery information could be entertainment yeah that's true but yeah. information could be anything like we've been contacting some universities so let's say the scenario is um florida state university and they videotape their wrestling matches, they videotape their baseball, they vi- but what do you see on TV? You might see the University of Florida football team playing. Right, but you right. don't see their tennis match, you don't see their golf game, right, right. but they're all videotaped. So what if the university were to, since they have those and they're already digitized, put them into a server, and that's a channel. So now uh, you have the, you send out a letter to all the alumni. How many alumni do you think there are at the <laughs> University of Florida? A lot. And then you tell the alumni, hey, if, if you want to entertain your children or even your grandchildren, because that's how far back they go taping this stuff, um, subscribe to Media Motion and subscribe to channel you know, 1117 or whatever. And, and if you do, they will send us, the Alumni Association, $1 or $2. You know, and that's it. Yeah, and there's still a way Gosh. to make a living with it, even though so many of these things look like, uh, you know, people are just taking them without paying. Because how many times do you say, I want to download it, but I want to pay for it, right? Yeah. 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 Say, why why right. do we do that? Yeah. All, right, all right, we do have a phone call. Good morning. You're on the air with Jim George. Hey, Jim. Um, I'm going to apologize because I, I don't know your language, uh, but I understand your English, and I and I appreciate uh, you sharing a lot of the uh, cutting-edge information going on, selling on your game. I'm a... Uh, 
work a lot in the nuclear power plant business, and I would just share with the listeners that uh, a lot of the plants all across the country are transitioning to the technology that Jim's talking about. And uh, the, not only the, uh, the control rooms is where all the sensors for all the sensitive equipment uh, is maintained. Uh, control officers sit in there and, and watch the different readings and temperatures for, for the whole plant and all the different components in there. And uh, today, what uh, we just did at Crystal River, uh, and they're still in the process of doing, they're called a, you know, uh, EPUs, which are electrical power upgrades, where in, while that's being conducted, they're also digitizing or uh, modernizing their uh, control capabilities. And it, what, it, what is said now is that nuclear power plants, coal plants, gas, uh, can almost essentially be ran off an, an appropriate laptop. But what we're concerned with and Jim can address this uh, technically and knowledge of, knowledgeably, is that um, anywhere in the world now, uh, as plants go to this technology, what we're concerned with are, are, are uh, uh, people leaving a, a um, being able to go into a plant's, uh, tech, uh, plant uh, by, by computer and manipulate a piece of uh, component, a sensitive component, that leaves no fingerprints. And so uh, there, there are security uh, uh, things in place for that, but uh, you could essentially shut down a, um, a generator or a pump uh, in, in Libya or in Italy, or, or, or somebody could do that to uh, somebody somewhere else here in the United States. So I wonder if Jim could address, I know that they do have uh, security, but uh, if, if uh, how close I am to the mark, Jim, and I appreciate you educating us. Certainly. Well, the encryption is, is the key. Um, a lot of times people write a proprietary algorithm, and the whole purpose of it is um, to keep honest people honest. We don't write that type of software. Uh -huh. We write <laughs> algorithms that keep criminals out. So the algorithm is on a, uh, a, a, a turntable, you might say. So what happens is every time you see that go around, whether it's 33 speed or 45 speed or 78 speed, it is changing drastically the algorithm. And so you really can't hack into it. Now, you could create a um, proprietary software of your own, let's say, that might slow the stream down. Because right, right. that's just something that's, that's called like transcoding. You take it from one code and you transcode it to something that you can slow down. But you still couldn't break into it because by the time you analyze what that code was, um, you know, let's say three seconds has passed and it's changed again. So oh. the only way you can secure the, all this stuff is to, is to use a military type encryption and uh, believe it or not, that's one of, when you hear about the Pentagon being broke into and that kind of, they're not using military encryption even in the Pentagon. They're just using like, oh, wow. like Norton that and, smart. And, and McAfee no. and uh -uh. you know they're and they're spent, they're maybe spending a million dollars for it or maybe ten million dollars, but it's off the shelf technology. You don't want off the shelf technology. You you have to be smarter than the criminals. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. So, well, so why? I mean, why wouldn't they use it? It's military. They, you would think they have access to it. Well, because it's military being used in a in a commercial t type of application, even though it's a military facility, and they always think that the more money they throw at it. I mean, look at Obamacare. The more money you throw at it, the better it's going to be, and that's not the case. Hmm. What well, the thing to do is find some hungry programmers and say, here's the deal, guys. Write this using military bits and encryption. And it's, it's a lot different than just zeros and ones. It's the way that they're arranged and it's the way that there is a, an interrupter, almost like a, a dinosaur that comes and eats certain bits of it. In other words, it's right. a, a, we call them null bits or ghost bits. So oh. um, for instance, if I have a CMTS, a device that turns on your modems and makes them works and gives you high speed internet, right. um, and I want to buy another one, but I want to steal that program that I have and, and put it on the new one, mm -hmm. and I do, the new one won't work. Why? Because they have lines of code that are ghost codes. In other words, they're not written. Ah, they're, okay. they're, cool. they're, they're like <laughs> invisible lines of code. Uh -huh. So if you stole the code and copied it, you can't do anything it with it. It wouldn't work because it's not the right code. <laughs> oh, wow. It's that's fascinating stuff. I love that. Wow, this time just goes so fast when you're here. There's so many more questions. Um, 
Well, I guess I can't ask you any questions. So I'm looking good. For, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, I know. We drained you. Uh, Jim, what is, your, what is your phone number? What's a good website for you? All right. The uh, telephone number in Ocala is 854-9795. And the uh, website is www, of course, Amera Cable. That's America with B-L-E on the end. So it spells Amera Cable. Dot us americable.us and you'll see some articles on there that i've written in case you're interested oh nice good job all right oh, thank you awesome. uh, jim cool, thank right? you thank you for all you do and for getting us excited about technology we'll take a break and we'll be right back Ocala's information station 1370 WOCA Ocala the weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Life jackets save lives. Where in Florida? A mix of clouds and sunshine today and becoming breezy with a passing shower in spots, the high 72 to 77. And mostly cloudy tonight, there can be a shower. Lows ranging from 59 and a few woodland spots to 71 on the southeast beaches. Tomorrow, times of clouds and sunshine and breezy, high 76 to 80. Sunday, partly sunny, high 78 to 82. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. For illnesses and minor injuries, visit Family Care Specialist Urgent Care Offices with two convenient locations. Our North Ocala office is at 1111 Northeast 25th Avenue, and our Bellevue office is at 4850 Southeast 110th Street, right next to Walgreens. The medical team at Urgent Care can also handle well-child and well-adult exams, school and work physicals, immunizations, laboratory services, EKGs, and x-rays. Most insurances are accepted. Walk-ins are welcome. Family Care Specialist Urgent Care for illnesses and minor injuries. Hey everybody, this is Kelly Hart, your new host of the Ocala Magazine radio show. Join me every Friday at 10 a.m. when we bring the pages of Ocala Magazine to life with in-depth interviews from and about your community. So don't miss Marion County's favorite city magazine, Ocala Magazine, every Friday at 10 a.m. right here on 1370 a.m. and 96.3 FM, WOCA, The Source. Attention college students and recent grads, don't miss Workforce Connections Student and Alumni Job Fair on Wednesday, November 13th at the College of Central Florida's Klein Conference Center in Ocala. The free event takes place from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. and includes the opportunity to meet with 30 local employers who want to hire candidates like you. Professional dress and registration are required. Learn more at 1-800-434-JOBS or visit WorkforceConnectionFL.com. Hi, I'm Yvette, and I'm here to tell you a few things about ABC Frederick's Appliance. They sell not only new, but used guaranteed appliances. When you call ABC Frederick's Appliance, they will provide service on what they sell and any appliances that you own. ABC Frederick's Appliance is located in Bellevue, right over the railroad tracks. Call 352-629-5181. That's 352-629-5181. That's 352-629-5181. ABC Frederick's Appliance. News Talk 1370. WOCA invites you to discover your full business potential. News Talk Radio is the perfect environment for your advertising. WOCA's News Talk format pinpoints information hungry, better educated, high income adults. So use us to talk to them. Call 732 8000. 732 8000. We're Ocala News Talk Radio. News Talk 1370. WOCA. Hey, I'm Gary. And I'm Eric. Did you know that Red Eye Radio is on WOCA The Source every night from 2 to 6 a.m. and it's live. That's right. No tape shows here. We know that the news doesn't sleep. And neither do we. So we're here with you live from 2 till 6 a.m. every weekday. Call us 866-90-RED-EYE. So join me, Gary McNamara, and me, Eric Harley, every weeknight to discuss the latest in news and entertainment right here on WOCA The Source. How good does it get? Golf has long been considered to be sport's most prestigious game, and WOCA has your connection to everything in the golf world. Every first and third Thursday at 10 a.m., tune in for Let's Talk Golf with your host, PGA professional and teacher to the stars, Jim Beckett, and operations manager for the links of Spruce Creek South, Darren Irwin, right here on The Source. 